Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the second of our four pre-recorded session for the webinar series, Pass or Fail, Assessing Assessment. Uh, I'm here today with Ute Ackermann Boeres, who is a Euroclea ambassador and member of the Euroclea board. And Ute will be talking with us about how to improve the learning process with formative assessment. Um, just, yeah, as a quick introduction also of myself, for those of you who haven't seen the first video, my name is Alice Modena and I am professional development coordinator at Euroclio. And I'm joined today also by Ulrika Stevens, who is a trainee at Euroclio working with us on the assessment webinar series. Uh, Ute, the floor is yours. Take it away. Hello, everybody. It's a real pleasure to be able to uh, present um, one of the webinars on assessment. And um, I'm going to just uh, share my screen with you um, and we'll do it this way. Okay, so um, what I want to talk about today is um, improving the learning process with formative assessment. Uh, this is part of a bigger webinar series and I understand in our previous uh, presentation or webinar we were talking about um, online formative assessment. I wanna talk more about the interaction between uh, students and teachers um, in the process of formative assessment. And I thought about the following questions. The first question I would like to look about at is um, the debate about around formative assessment and when this term actually came up and when we started talking about both summative and formative assessment. The second section would uh, look at what is formative assessment. Then I'm looking at the purpose of formative assessment. In the fourth section, I would like uh, to analyze what formative assessment could look like. So how does that look like in practice? And then how can students be actively involved in formative assessment? What are the disadvantages or the challenges of formative assessment? And finally, I will um, sum up the webinar with a brief conclusion. So first I would like to look at the debate around formative assessment. And um, the term was coined or the, dis the, the distinction between um, summative and formative assessment wasn't really coined in 1967. And the debate about how students are assessed is closely linked to how education and the role of the teacher are viewed. For example, Bloom says that assessment is always um, a tool of selection. And if we talk about summative and formative assessment, it's about on the one hand selecting, selecting students according to how they perform or developing and helping students develop. So the, the overall question is also, what is the ultimate goal of education? Are we just teaching to the test or do we want to help students develop their learning and develop their understanding? Um, Bolton and, uh, and others said, for example, that assessment is also an instrument to empower students. And very often standardized testing can be disruptive. So formative assessment is a, is a way uh, is a tool and is an instrument of um, giving students more autonomy of their learning and a better understanding of their learning. And that also very closely is connect to, uh, connected to the question of the role of the teacher. Is the role of the teacher to simply deliver factual information or is the role of the teacher to help students develop from where they are and um, that, of course, then is also very closely connected to differentiation. Now, the OECD, um, in their policy brief from 2005, very clearly said that um, formative assessment should really be at the center of teaching because it um, gives, there's a number of reasons why this should be the case. First of all, the OECD says that it improves the equity of students' outcomes. So they found out that schools that use formative assessment, they don't only show a general improvement in the students' learning and understanding, but it 
helped in particular those students who were previously underachieving. And they also found out that attendance and, um, and retention of learning have improved considerably as a result of formative assessment. But also formative assessment builds on students learning to learn skills. It emphasizes the process of learning, the process of teaching on the side of the teacher, of course, and it also involves students as partner in that, as partners in that process. So students are not just at the receiving end, but they, are, they should be actively involved. And as a result of that, it also changes the culture in the classroom and it helps establish uh, a communication between the students and uh, the teachers. So it helps students and teachers to communicate uh, uh, their learning goals. Um, and it in the end results also of um, um, in a relationship between teacher and students that is more on an equal level. Uh, what is not a difference between formative and summative assessment or how can formative and summative assessment actually work together? Because I think um, we should not always um, oppose those two forms of assessment, but we should rather see how formative assessment can be a help um, in doing well in summative assessment. Because after all, um, students have to sit exams, students will be assessed externally by different exam boards. Um, so formative assessment, I think, has to go hand in hand with summative assessment. Now, formative assessment is, first of all, an assessment for learning, whereas summative assessment is assessment of learning. So it happens always after something has been taught. And um, that's the biggest difference between summative and formative assessment. Formative assessment is an assessment that happens during learning, that happens during the process of learning. And formative assessment is both reflective and evaluative. It allows the teacher to reflect upon their teaching and it allows the teacher then to always uh, to also implement this considerations into the planning. So it is also formative, is all, uh, assessment is also the basis for forward planning and for looking ahead. Um, formative assessment should also be um, continuous, continuous. It should not be something that is happening only in one class and then it's finished. It is part of a learning process. And it can be done, for example, in classes through questioning uh, students, and that allows the teacher to give more or less immediate feedback. Um, and this is a form of formative assessment. It can also be the, in the form of um, exit tickets, for example, at the end of a lesson. So in that sense, formative assessment is certainly something that should happen continuously. Formative assessment could also be the result of what we could call a diagnostic assessment. For example, if at the beginning of the year, I give my students a baseline assessment to see where they stand, and then I uh, build my teaching on that baseline assessment, and I will always go that back and forth, um, looking at, is my teaching successful? Does my teaching help students? Um, to go to the next level? Does it help in their development? Does it help in their understanding? So formative assessment is also, of course, more individualized. So it helps teachers to give very specific feedback to specific students, rather than just giving a general grade, a number grade or a letter grade, depending on the system. So it is highly individualized and it helps the student to develop their own skills from a specific base, if you want, from a specific level. And I think we can also see here how formative and summative assessment are actually, are, in my opinion, um, they complement each other. Um, you can see on the diagram that um, summative assessment is assessing what a student has learned. So this is really backward looking. Whereas formative assessment is taking 
um, or looking at where the student is at this point, the teachers reflecting upon the learning process um, and is then basing their teaching and their planning um, on, on the formative assessment. And formative assessment can really be a tool to help students then later on do well in summative assessments. So I would say formative and summative assessments are not mutually exclusive, but I think they go hand in hand. What I want to look at next is what is the purpose of formative assessment? And we can actually look at four groups of people uh, for whom formative assessment is important. I want to focus on teachers and students, but of course, formative assessment is also important for parents and the school. Now, it is important for teachers because it helps teachers to reflect on what has been taught and it is a basis for what uh, is going to be taught. So it's a good basis for planning purposes. It helps students to reflect and help develop skills in a given subject. When students receive um, specific feedback and also meaningful feedback, um, it is far more useful than just receiving a letter grade. And it does that allows for their development, for their academic development. Now, for parents, of course, it also helps them to get a better understanding of what is happening in, in, in the class, of what is happening in a specific subject, rather than seeing, again, just a letter grade. So parents get also a better understanding of what is going on in school. For the school, for the administration, it is a very helpful tool for planning purposes. So formative assessment, while it is of course super important for teachers and students, it can be also very helpful for parents and the school. Now, I want to focus a little bit more on the relationship between teacher and student because the format, formative assessment really is based on, on good and meaningful communication and interaction between teacher and student. So the teacher gives meaningful feedback on the work of the student. And based on that, uh, we can have a communication about what criteria should be uh, met, um, what is actually um, a good quality, um, what, what work is of good quality. So students and teachers, they should communicate about that. And I will talk a little bit more about that later. Now, it, allows the teacher to reflect and to adjust their teaching, whereas it allows also the student to reflect and apply the feedback. So it's very important that step of, that, uh, of implying, applying the feedback and using the feedback is a very important step. And we see also uh, later how this can be implemented in the class, in the lesson. And that brings me to the next section, which is what uh, could formative assessment look like? And um, the first thing is of course that formative assessment has to be reliable. It has to be reliable over time. So a teacher should be aware of the criteria that uh, they assess. Um, a student should be aware of these criteria and there should be a reliable baseline if you want over time. So um, the feedback or the expectation shouldn't um, differ too much. There should be a certain continuity. Um, of course, formative assessment should also offer valid feedback, meaning it should um, give meaningful feedback. It should be specific. Um, comments like would good job or great work are not very helpful for a student. So it should be really specific of what the student did well and in what areas the student can improve. It should be also very transparent and that connects also to the next point. So the criteria, they should be very clearly communicated to the students. And eventually what a teacher wants is um, 
they want the students to be less dependent on the teacher. So it should offer the students uh, more autonomy. Students should be able also to evaluate and to, uh, their work. They should be able to reflect upon their work. And that is connected to the point about what is or student and teachers should have a common understanding on what constitutes a good quality work. Um, only if students and teachers can agree on that, um, uh, formative uh, assessment makes sense. So we have those four really important criteria. It should be reliable, it should be valid, it should be transparent, but also there should be a common understanding on what constitutes good quality. Now, we could also differentiate between three types of assessment. This is the teacher assessment, and peer assessment, and self-assessment. I think it's already very clear um, what it means. So teacher assessment means the teacher is actually looking at the work and gives feedback. Peer assessment means that the students um, have to have an awareness of the criteria that they want to assess of someone else's work. And I think that is already a, a, on a higher level. So there is on that metacognitive basis, students need to be need to have an understanding of the criteria, which of course is then also the case for self-assessment. And the first example um, is an example on teacher assessment without grade levels. And I think this is something that a lot of teachers have observed that students of course will um, look immediately at the grade they got rather than at the comments. So um, it is not, it is maybe a good thing uh, not to give students grades immediately, but to give them first written comments. And on the left side, you see um, a comment um, that I gave a student on um, how to structure an essay. So the student had problems with the paragraph um, structure and I gave um, very clear indication which areas could be improved. On point six, you see that the student was writing an essay on Al Capone and um, was somehow smitten by him and wrote only positive uh, comments about Al Capone. And one of the comments I had and the feedback I had is that he collected very interesting sources, but that I would like to have also other sources in order to show different perspectives. So it is quite important um, that the feedback is specific and it very clearly tells the student why you give that feedback, what is the rationale behind it. On the right side, you will see um, another way of commenting a student's work. This is using a program called Turnitin, where you can get feedback straight into in the text. Uh, Turnitin is also programmed to check for plagiarism but it allows also the teacher to give very specific feedback. And you can do that in different ways. For example, you can see that uh, I can highlight certain um, parts of uh, the text and then add a, a comment here, which is again, pretty specific for that particular part in the essay. Or I could ask questions. Um, or in that case, I even crossed out something saying that um, the sources the student provided would not count as academic sources. Um, so this would be a way of giving feedback and assessing uh, a piece of work without giving a grade. Now, what you can do then, you can later on in class, spend time uh, with students um, as they are implementing the feedback. It's always good to implement the feedback as quickly as possible so that you have also that opportunity of um, talking about the feedback and the student has the opportunity to ask questions. Another uh, way, this is now more the old fashioned way where you will have a teacher writing on an essay, giving a comment on an essay and giving really good questions here on this side. So that can be also feedback. Questions can be a form of feedback. Um, and then you have, of course, uh, a general comment and then you have very specific point, points that the student should be having in mind when writing the next essay. Now, a good approach here is again, that the student could use this 
could take this essay and implement the feedback right away in class. So you have that um, immediate uh, response to the feedback. Now, another form of assessment is formative assessment is the peer assessment. And here is a very interesting um, uh, activity which was uh, done by Jane Facey and you can find that also in uh, Teaching History magazine um, where she made the so-called conveyor belt marking where each student where one essay is passed around and each student is looking for one specific criteria. So rather than looking for the whole bunch of criteria, um, student HS was looking just, did the student make a good point? And writing a comment there, the next student would only look at um, whether the essay uses good evidence and make a comment again. So this means that each individual student is looking at a specific criteria. And next time round, the student would look at a different criteria. Like this, you sharpen their eyes and you actually have students also train again, looking for specific criteria and, and yes, developing an awareness. And what you can see here at the bottom, there's also a section for self-assessment for the student. So what went well was that the student used uh, evidence and even better if, if would be if all points were linked with the question. So at the end, the student is making a self-assessment based on the peer assessment. And again, you can have also communication between the students, which is again, a form, of, um, a form of formative assessment. Another form of peer assessment is this example where you have small groups analyzing um, particular questions together. So uh, the group has to agree on the criteria, the group has to discuss the criteria, are the criteria applied, and then give also, again, a comment. So that's also a form of formative peer assessment. Again, it helps the students to be aware of um, the criteria, to be aware of what constitutes a good quality um, essay or answer in that case. And finally, uh, this is an example of self-assessment and reflection by a student. Now, this is um, one of my students who um, had to write an extended essay for the International Baccalaureate. And this is uh, a longer piece, it's a longer essay and it goes over several months. Part of this um, journey, if you want, is that the student has to uh, record self-assessment and reflections at particular intervals. Now, what I highlighted here in this text is um, how the students assessed his work, but also the challenges he faced. So for example, he said that his main challenge was that the essay was too descriptive rather than analytical. So the student shows an understanding of the criteria. And he goes on saying uh, what he will do to overcome this. Um, he went on saying that he faced other challenges in writing this essay and in meeting the criteria and uh, that came, in that case, it would have been the criteria of showing different perspectives and using more primary sources as evidence. And then he says again, one way to address this is to use photographic primary sources and making inferences. So you can see that the student here has thought about the various criteria that uh, should be met in, in the end of a summative assessment but the formative assessment and his self-assessment played a very important role in hopefully in the end meeting then those criteria of the summative assessment. The question is now, you can see already from the previous uh, part, how students can be actively involved in formative assessment. And this is nicely shown in, uh, in this table, which I took from, um, an article by uh, James McVillan and others, um, which shows the student-teacher interaction and builds on the, on the examples or the points I mentioned before. So you can see that there are different stages. And in the first stage, the teacher has to establish the criteria. 
And the second stage would then be that the student is learning through feedback also how these uh, criteria can be applied. Then by delivering work, by writing an essay, feedback is prov provided to the student uh, showing whether the student actually applied those criteria. And based on that, both the teacher and the student will then um, reflect and plan what they are going to do next. So you can see also here that there are different levels where the student, so the final aim is that the student constructs his goals and strategies. So that would be the final aim. But we can of course see that students will fall into different categories and maybe need more or less help uh, from the teacher. Now, um, formative assessment has a lot of advantages and it is a really helpful tool for teachers to support students reach their potential. Um, but as I said before, formative assessment has to be meaningful. It has to be challenging. It has to be uh, very specific. So we have also some challenges when it comes to formative assessment. And well, first challenge, I think that many teachers will acknowledge is that it can be very time consuming, especially if you have a bigger piece of work and you want to assess a variety of criteria, um, it can take a long time to uh, give meaningful and specific um, formative feedback. And another problem here is that a lot of teachers may not have the training of how formative assessment can be used effectively. So how should teachers integrate formative assessment in their teaching? How can formative assessment really help them um, develop their lessons and plan for the next lessons? Formative assessment should be continuous it, it has to be built into the lessons. And that is, of course, a challenge for the planning. So a teacher has to plan to, in, to integrate formative assessments, uh, blocks of formative assessments in the lesson. And if you have um, a tight, um, if, you don't, if you are tight with time, if you have to meet external exam um, dates, that can be challenging. And it goes with the, uh, with the point at the top that it can be very time consuming. Um, and then of course, very often formative assessment does not necessarily have the same weight when it comes to grades. And students will not focus so much on, on assessments where they just in inverted commas get, um, get comments, but they will focus more on those uh, pieces of work or those uh, pieces that are assessed, which will really carry a weight you know, and have a, um, a grade, a letter grade. So this is something um, that the schools and the teachers in the school have to decide how they're gonna weight and how formative assessment is in the end also part of the grade at the end. And the problem is of course that formative, formative assessment and that's connected to the previous point offers qualitative but not necessarily uh, quantitative data. So often formative assessment offers comments. It always offers comments rather than grades. And of course, when it comes to grading, when it comes to report cards, that is really a challenge. So um, on the one hand, we have all these really positive um, characteristics of formative assessment for teaching and for learning. But of course, we have on the other side also the challenges. That brings me to my conclusion. Formative assessment is assessment for learning. It really puts the student and the student's learning in the center. So the focus is on the process. The focus is on helping, helping the student develop their understanding. Formative assessment can help teachers plan their lessons. And it may also force teachers to change their lessons 
It also allows teachers to step away from rubrics and from grading uh, marking schemes and rather give specific feedback to students how they can improve their work. But these criteria can be taken from rubrics, which will be later on needed for summative assessment. So I'm not saying that there shouldn't be any rubrics or any criteria, but maybe at the moment, the, student, the teacher can focus more on giving um, the feedback and then later on show the students where this feedback uh, falls in. Um, it can also help students to understand and meet the criteria of summative assessment. So there is clearly the link between formative and summative assessment. It also involves students actively in their learning because they have to reflect, they have to apply the feedback. It improves the communication between teachers and students. And I would say also, it really allows students to be more autonomous. On the other hand, it can be very time consuming and it needs to be seen in combination with a summative assessment. But I think looking back at some of the examples of peer and self-assessment, um, there can be gradually less focus on the teacher uh, feedback and rather more focused on the self and peer assessment. So this would conclude the webinar on formative assessment as a way of assisting the process of learning. I would like to thank Euroclio for giving me the opportunity um, to do this webinar today. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Uta. Thank you so, so much for, for giving us such a great glimpse into teacher-student interaction and for showing us how formative assessment can be made meaningful and challenging and specific, as well as how we can help students become the protagonists of the learning by letting them in on the secret of, you know, how does success look like and also how is success actually assessed. Thank you also for the great bridge into the next two webinars, because uh, next week we will be publishing our webinar on how to use the Council of Europe um, butterfly for the assessment of competences. And in particular, we will look into how to use that and to establish before we plan our lesson, how we will uh, assess knowledge, skills, competences, attitudes, and values uh, so that we can build assessment into the lesson, which you already mentioned is kind of key, especially when you touch uh, upon formative assessment. And then we will look into the use of rubrics uh, in relation to assessment. So I was very, very happy when you mentioned both of them in your conclusions. Um, yeah, thank you so, so much for making the time to prepare this with us and for spending this July morning uh, with us. Um, thank you for all participants who watched the video and yeah, see you soon. Thank you very much.